The proceeding will start shortly. 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 Order. Marsha de Cordova to move the motion. Thank you, Chair. Can I, I beg to move that this House has considered e-petitions uh, 610557, 616557 and 619609 relating to paying financial support for healthcare students. And can I say that it is an absolute pleasure to serve under your chairmanship this afternoon. So I want to start by congratulating the petitioners, Victoria, Charlotte and Jacqueline, for starting these, position, these petitions, which were signed by over 36,000 people. And I'd also like to thank all the organisations that prepared briefings ahead of this debate, this debate, including the Royal Colleges of Nursing and Midwives, and the National Union of Students, as well as the work of the Petitions Committee. Today's debate is timely as many of our constituents have been impacted by the cost of living crisis in multiple ways, but the impact on students and the unique challenges that they face are rarely acknowledged. Now, the president of the University's UK, Pro Professor Steve West, stated that students are at risk of becoming the forgotten group in this cost of living crisis. Academic and workplace commitments leave little room for students to earn outside of their studies, which means that it is going to be inevitable that the cost of living pressures will hit them the hardest. Now, these pressures are more pronounced for those studying healthcare subjects, as many are mature students and may have to balance parenting duties with course commitments, not to mention the extra costs that they face with supporting their children. Healthcare students responding to the Petitions um, Committee survey ahead of today's debate said that they were struggling with the cost of living, with 58% saying that it was difficult or very difficult to afford energy, including gas and electricity, and 19% said 
they had visited a food bank and 26% said that they were considering using a food bank. Further adding to the pressure, healthcare students are required to complete thousands of hours of unpaid clinical placements over their course program. And one student nurse said, I wanted to leave my course this year when I was working on placement and not able to afford food. I was so hungry and my energy was so de depleted that it was affecting me being able to carry out my work. I was struggling so much financially that the staff resorted to giving me toilet roll, sanitary products, and even paying sometimes for my food. Now, as healthcare students are not paid or classed as workers, they often lose out on additional support or entitlements, such as the 30 hours of free childcare, which is, avail which is available to working parents. Many said that they were under considerable financial strain and found their workload difficult to manage between juggling childcare, the unpaid nursing placements, studying and having a second paid job. Now worryingly, many said that they were considering leaving their courses due to the financial pressures relating to childcare costs, with 93% saying they strongly agree that healthcare students should be eligible for childcare. In the words of one student, saying, I am working just as, just as hard as I was when I was employed in my local police force 12 months ago. And yet, as I am now considering, considered a student and not a worker, I no longer can claim the 30 hours free childcare for my three-year-old child. Now, there are shortages of many NHS staff, so I can't understand why government does not make it easier for parents to study for these roles. Now, it is a fact that England has the least generous financial support for healthcare students. Since the removal of the NHS bursary back in 2016... Well, yes, of course. Paul, you... I uh, thank my honourable friend for giving way. Uh, I regret not being able to stay for the whole debate, but would have wanted to make a contribution as chair of the all-party parliamentary group for students and she refers to the debate that we had um, I think now seven years ago and I can recall in that debate um, the then minister Ben Gummer uh, telling us that he was keen to share the benefits of the student funding system the undergraduate funding system uh, with health care students who nurses and midwives who previously uh, benefited from the bursaries and was anticipating that that would lead to uh, uh, better support and uh, more, uh, more expansion of, um, of, of uh, people coming into the service. Would she recognise that um, those of us who argued at that stage mm -hmm. that it would lead in the other direction um, have been validated by experience? We have, would she agree that we have seen more um, particularly mature um, potential nurses and midwives no longer um, enter, uh, enter into the profession. And is she concerned, and would she hope that the Minister will respond to the UCAS figures um, for this year, which so show a 16% decline in the number of people applying um, to uh, study healthcare courses? Well, I think my honourable friend makes an incredibly... Um, important and absolutely true point, um, which I will be coming on to shortly um, in, in my speech. I think it's, it's clear that the changes to the bursary scheme has left, led to a fall in members of students taking up these much-needed roles. So since the removal of the uh, bursary scheme, students studying nursing, midwifery and allied health professional courses in England are only eligible for standard student finance packages of tuition fees and maintenance loans. Whereas students in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland who are eligible enjoy fully funded education. Now I'm sure that when the Minister does get to his feet, he will respond to my honourable friend's points. But also I have no doubt that he will point out that since 2020 students are eligible for the standard student support package that they also receive an additional £5,000 training grant through the NHS Learning Support Fund and additional grants for some qualifying students and that the government has increased travel and accommodation support. 
But, Madam Chair, we know that that really simply is not enough. Now, 80% of student midwives in England who took part in the Royal College of Midwives survey said that they would have taken an addition, they would take, be taking on additional debt over and above the loans available to students. Moreover, nearly three quarters of student midwives in England said that they expect to graduate with debts of more than £40,000. And I'm sure uh, my honourable friends will agree with me that that just really cannot be acceptable. Now, the government imposed barriers are making healthcare students, healthcare studies rather, unaffordable for many students. Now, in the first year after the changes to the bursary model, the number of applicants for nursing courses um, from England, it fell by 23%. And my honourable friend highlighted the latest UCAS figures that also showed this year alone there has been a fall in the numbers. So why does this all matter? Well, there are two uh, key points that I will make today. And the first is it's a matter of fairness and equity. Healthcare students make a significant contribution and play a vital role in delivering high quality healthcare. Many of those on placements are often required to cover the responsibilities of qualified healthcare workers due to the workforce shortages. Now, the government must look at increasing financial support for healthcare students, uh, and I do hope the Minister will, will address that, including through you know, creating a scheme that would offset or write off debt run up by healthcare students through tuition fees if they commit to working in the NHS for a period of time. This is a scheme that would be similar to what is used in Wales, and I'm fairly certain that it is working. Ensuring that higher education funding models are, com are complemented by a financial package for students, such as making sure grants reflect the true cost of living, like they do in Scotland, which has the most generous support, uh, living cost support. Extending 30 hours of free childcare to those on placements. So I would welcome, when the Minister gets stands to his feet, that he will address these points in his response. Also, to adequately address fairness and equity, the government must also focus on the intersectionality, looking at the age and sex of healthcare student, students, as many tend to be women and or mature students, more likely uh, with uh, dependents as well. Uh, the second point I want to touch on is the workforce crisis in the NHS, um, which is so severe that it is undermining the NHS's capacity to properly deliver its uh, services. We all know it's on its knees. So the long-term workforce plan produced by NHS England um, suggested that the system is now operating with over 150,000 fewer staff that they need. And according to the Royal College of Nursing, there are 43,000 vacant, um, vacant registered nurse, nursing posts in the NHS in England alone. Now, the uh, current General Secretary of Unison, Christine McAneer, she um, rightly, as my honourable friend did also, predicted the damage the government's reforms would do um, were it to get rid of the bursary scheme. And she said, they seem not to care that in a few years' time, now, the NHS will be seriously short of nurses and there will be too few new recruits coming through to fill the gaps. And seven years later, we can all attest to that being the truth. Now, the NHS is our greatest institution, established 75 years ago by the then Labour government. It is experiencing some of the most severe pressures in its history. Waiting lists are at an all-time high, and ministers point to the impact of the pandemic, but we all know that before we entered the pandemic, waiting lists were already too high. Now, if we want to make sure our NHS survives another 75 years, the government must make progress on the workforce challenges. It needs to look at all options and also kind of think bigger to incentivise more people to take up healthcare professions. And I think restoring some sort of financial support package would potentially do that. 
It requires to fundamentally rethink the way that it approaches its support for healthcare students, including through making extra funding available um, for healthcare education, but also for, for training as well. I believe, um, Madam Chair, that we owe it to our healthcare students to ensure that there is adequate financial support as they provide the care that keeps us all healthy and to protect the long-term interests of our country through having a workforce that can truly deliver all of the services that the National Health Service provides. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered e-petitions 610557, 616557 and 619609 relating to pay and financial support for healthcare students Andrew uh, Thank you very much, Ms Favag, and uh, it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. Uh, I also, uh, in starting, want to welcome the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Minister, to his latest position uh, on the government front bench, and I hope he enjoys what remaining time uh, the Conservatives have in government uh, in the Department for Health and Social Care. I wish him uh, the best over the next few months. Uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to respond on behalf of the Shadow Health and Social Care team. I want to start by thanking my honourable friend, the member for Battersea, for her powerful contribution and indeed my honourable friend, the member for Sheffield Central, uh, for his wise contributions to and indeed to the Petitions Committee for their work in preparing uh, this debate. Being a student nurse in the cost of living crisis is tough. As we know, valuing our NHS workforce through fair pay and conditions is crucial to tackling vacancies. And yet in this country, in 2023, almost nine in ten student midwives in England, 87.5% in the RCM summer survey 2023, worry about the amount of debt they are in. Three quarters, 74% of student midwives here in England, surveyed by the Royal College of Midwives, expect to graduate with debts of more than £40,000. I will give way. Uh, I thank my honourable friend for giving way, because he, he's making a very important point, and I'm sure he will be coming on to say that the experience he shares around midwives applies also to nurses um, and to others on healthcare courses. The all-party parliamentary student group report, which I mentioned uh, a moment ago, highlighted the way in which the student funding model was broken, mm. um, not least by pointing out that the average loan uh, now falls short of monthly living costs by £439. Now, the way every month, uh, according to Save Our Student, now, the way in which most students are dealing with that, and it is raising some concerns... Mm is by taking on ever-increasing amounts of paid employment. Mm. Um, one Russell Group University told us that uh, they have a significant number of students working more than 35 hours a week. Now, will he accept that that is an option that is not available to most uh, nurses, midwives and other uh, healthcare students on similar courses? because of the very structure of their courses. And this is something that the government is failing to address. Yeah. Uh, my honourable friend hits the nail on the head here. I mean, we are talking about student nurses, student mm. midwives. They do not have any kind of spare time to be able to dedicate to other forms mm. of paid employment. It's just physically and mentally uh, impossible for them to do that. And I do think there needs to be greater recognition uh, of the unique nature of these kinds of students to all other kinds of students uh, in that some of the uh, extra support that many students, including myself many, many years ago, uh, relied on uh, to be able to make ends meet. If you're studying uh, in uh, the nursing, uh, the midwifery, the caring professions, 
uh, you don't have that same ability. And uh, that was one reason why there was always additional support mm. for those groups uh, of people. Indeed, uh, going back to the survey, um, which was conducted by the petitions committee for this debate, 58% responding said it was difficult or very difficult to afford energy, including gas and electricity. 19% of respondents said they'd visited a food bank, and 26% said they were considering using a food bank. Mm. This is a national scandal, a cost of living scandal that is having a devastating impact on our ability to recruit and indeed to retain staff in the National Health Service. Over nine in 10 student midwives in England, 91% know at least someone who has dropped out of their midwifery studies because of financial problems. Now, we know the Conservative government abolished NHS bursaries for student nurses, midwives and allied health professionals back in 2017. Students undertaking their degree since then have had to pay to train to work in the NHS. As a result, not surprisingly, the number of applications to study nursing in England fell in the following years, with applications down by almost 30% by 2019. It's not rocket science as to what has caused that. Labour said at the time that it was the wrong decision, and the Public Accounts Committee, in their report in September 2020, agreed that the decision to remove the NHS bursary was, and I quote, uh, that it had failed to achieve its ambition to increase student nurses uh, and their numbers. It is just another example of a government that has time and again failed to plan for the long term. In the NHS workforce crisis, uh, we have deteriorated to the point where we now have over 100,000 vacancies, including 40,100 nursing vacancies. We have waited so long for the NHS workforce plan. Now we finally have it. It's something that Labour has been calling for mm. for a number of years. I'm glad that they did pinch my uh, honourable friend, the member for Ilford's plan. Uh, but since then, not much has happened. Mm. And it makes clear the scale of neglect, a wasted decade of drift and inaction, impacting not only on staff but on those training. Placements are an important part of nursing and healthcare courses because they provide the vital supervised training that allows students to gain the necessary skills and the experience to meet education outcomes and work in clinical settings. Labour knows the value of these placements, which is why increasing them is an important part of our plan to expand the NHS workforce. We will focus on ensuring we have the roles, the trainees and the senior professionals needed to tackle the challenges and to seize the opportunities, drawing on a diverse range of skills and inspiring people around the country to pursue a career in the NHS, in the caring professions. We will also work with health staff and their trade unions to review existing training pathways and to explore new entry routes to a career in the NHS, including high quality apprenticeships. Childcare is a sector under huge strain. Mm. And while some healthcare students may be eligible for parental support from the NHS Learning Support Fund of £2,000 a year, this is dwarfed mm. against the ever increasing costs of childcare. This leaves many studying parents vulnerable to childcare costs, particularly when we consider the hours needed to fulfil the placement requirements. Open Democracy has reported some nursing students considered leaving their courses because of financial pressures related directly to childcare costs. And this is sadly a trend across our economy. The cost of childcare is pricing parents and especially women, out of the professions they love. So 
does the Minister agree with me that adequate support for a profession as critical as nursing and midwifery should not be dependent on where you study, but should be across the board? What assessment has he made of support at all stages of training for studying parents to build an effective, inclusive workforce in our NHS? Now, I know that the 11,000 people who have signed this petition will be looking for a response from the government. So does the Minister regret the decision to abolish NHS bursaries? And what additional support can healthcare students expect given the current cost of living crisis? Ms Favag, when two in five student nurses and three in five student midwives are saying that they considered leaving their course last year, we must take that seriously given the threat to the future uh, of the NHS workforce that that poses. Already students cite the placement experience and lack of support in, as major factors in leaving their course. And the Conservative made crisis in the NHS only makes this worth, worse. This month in the King's speech, we might have expected to hear something to deal with the worst NHS crisis in its history, but there was virtually nothing. And when the energy price cap has increased by half this Parliament and the cost of living crisis is hammering healthcare students, we got a flagship energy bill that, I quote, wouldn't necessarily bring energy prices down. <laughs> Whether it's the NHS or the cost of living crisis, this Conservative government looks like it has thrown in the towel. It is divided. It's weak. It's out of ideas. It's out of time. And every day that goes on, it is British people, it's our public services, and it's our patients who pay the price. For Labour's part, we know that our healthcare staff are our national health services' most valuable asset, and how vital it is to ensure that there is a pipeline of future talent coming through. That's why the next Labour government will put its workforce plan at the heart of its plans to restore, renew and rejuvenate our National Health Service. Yeah, yeah. Minister Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Favark. It's a great pleasure to see you in the chair in my first uh, Westminster Hall debate in, in this new role. And I'm grateful to the British public for raising these important issues that were covered in the three e-petitions that we're considering today and to the member for Battersea for opening the debate. Can I also thank the uh, Shadow Minister for Social Care for his contribution and his qualified welcome uh, to this new role. Uh, and can I also thank the member for Sheffield Central for his interventions during the debate. Our students are the future of our NHS, so it's imperative that we not only support them throughout their studies, but also ensure as many as possible go on to successful careers in healthcare. The government recognises the unique nature of healthcare degrees, the intensity of the courses and the additional financial pressures clinical placements can cause. That's why we're doing as much as we can with the funding available to us to ensure that clinical students have the financial support that they need in order to succeed. Two of the petitions that we're here today to discuss focused on pay for student placements. Whilst they're on placement, student nurses, midwives and allied health professionals make valuable contributions to clinical teams. However, the purpose of those placements is student development and not meeting staffing needs. They exist to give students the opportunity to learn and to acquire the skills and experience they need to graduate and join the professional register. That is why we believe that clinical placements shouldn't be described as jobs. Students are not contracted to provide care and do not hold contracts of employment. Therefore, whilst we recognise the very significant contribution made by students, the government doesn't at this time plan to introduce play, uh, pay for students on placement. However... On that point, Minister Yeah. Uh, I find the forgiving way, but just on that point, if it, the government are not planning to, to look, at, look at this again, but have they looked at the impact of if those student nurses were taking out of the workforce in, the, in, 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 in NHS care settings, 
to see how the, the workforce would manage without them because they are playing a vital role. Yes, they are learning and so forth, but they are also fulfilling another role as well. So are, has the government carried out any assessment on the impact of taking them away from that by not giving them pay? Well, thank you, the Honourable Lady, for that uh, intervention. Uh, the government and the professional bodies that set the, uh, the rules for student placements have been very clear that uh, if um, those students were not there, the setting should still be clinically safe um, and uh, procedures should be able to be conducted. All student placements should be in addition to regular staffing. They shouldn't be to fill gaps in staffing rotors. They shouldn't be there in order. And that's not to, in any way, um, suggest that, that uh, students on placement do not make a very significant contribution. I think we would all agree they do, and I pay tribute to the contribution they make. But if the students weren't there, in all settings, the staffing, the employed staff, uh, should be able to continue to deliver NHS services in the way that we would all want to see. Um, so we, we do not wish to um, introduce pay for students on placement. However, we do intend to continue to listen to students' concerns around the costs of training and what we can do to support them, building on the work that we've already done. Since September 2020, all eligible nursing, midwifery and allied health professional students have benefited from the Learning Support Fund, a non-repayable, non-income assessed training grant of at least £5,000 per academic year. And on the 1st of September this year, we announced a 50% increase to the travel and accommodation payments available through the Learning Support Fund, ensuring that students are appropriately reimbursed for travelling to clinical placements. And this government is not only supporting the more traditional routes into education and training. As we set out in the first ever NHS long-term workforce plan, we are expanding alternative routes into healthcare, enabling people from diverse backgrounds and for those whom a traditional uh, university degree is not possible or not the right thing for them, to bring their unique skills and perspectives to the NHS. We are now offering blended learning courses, allowing students to take some of their courses online, and more than a quarter of the nurses' mandatory practice learning hours can now be delivered by innovative simulation. We're also continuing to expand our apprenticeship offer, allowing students to study towards a degree whilst also learning on the job. As set out in the long-term workforce plan, we will deliver a huge increase in the number of clinical staff apprenticeships. Um, we get them, uh, we're intending to get them up from 7% today to 20% by 2032. Building on the success of our existing registered nursing degree apprenticeship programme, which has more than 10,000 students have started on that course since 2017. And we're providing a more diverse set of pathways into healthcare careers to open up more opportunities for staff to progress and move into new roles. Thanks to an increase in the number of associate roles, such as nursing associates, it will be possible to join the NHS as an apprentice healthcare support worker and go on to qualify as a registered nurse. I'd just like to pick up now on a point made by the member for Sheffield Central who talked about the UCAS figures showing a 16% decline in applications. The drop in applications compared to um, previous years reflects an expected rebalancing following the unprecedented demand for healthcare courses during the pandemic. At the June application deadline this year, there were 44,000 applicants for nursing and midwifery courses in England, which is an increase of 12% compared to this time in 2019. The latest data shows that over 22,000 students have accepted places on nursing and midwifery courses in England, which is an increase of 6% compared to the same time in 2019. And if we look at um, allied health professionals, there were 2,200 more undergraduates um, overall enrolled on paramedic science courses in England in 2021-2022 compared to 2019-2020, which represents a 30% increase. Let me now address the second issue raised today, childcare payment for student midwives, nurses and paramedics during their placement hours. The government understands how important childcare is for studying parents, and we believe that they should have every opportunity to continue in education and achieve their aspirations. As the Minister for Skills, Apprenticeships and Higher Education set out in our response to the, uh, the petition, the government provides a range of financial support to students with children. 
They're eligible for 15 hours free early education for three and four year olds. And full time students on undergraduate courses with dependent children could also be eligible for the childcare grant and the parent at learning allowance. The childcare grant covers whichever is the lowest, 85% of childcare costs or a fixed maximum amount of around £190 per week for one child or £320 for two or more children. Whilst the parent's learning allowance is up to £1,915 a year and does not have to be repaid. It's paid in three instalments, one at the start of each term, and goes directly into students' bank accounts. What's more, as part of the Learning Support Fund, my department offer all eligible nursing, midwifery and allied health professional students an additional non-repayable and non-income assessed grant of £2,000 per academic year towards childcare costs. Ms Favark, using the budgets available to us, the Government will continue to provide students with children with as many opportunities and as much support as possible to allow them to pursue a career in healthcare. As we set out in the first ever NHS long-term workforce plan, a robust and resilient education and training system is critical to the future of our NHS. Because having the right people with the right skills and in the right places, we can deliver first-class care for patients now and into the long-term future. Marsha de Cordova to wind up. Thank you, Chair. And can I thank um, colleagues, my honourable friend for Sheffield Central, for his important contributions, and obviously to the, my honourable friend, uh, the Shadow Public Health Minister, uh, for, for his contributions also. It is disappointing, given all of the information that was set out in my speech and my honourable friend's uh, speech, that the government really haven't fully addressed some of the challenges around financial support because of the support that he set out, we already know that it is not good enough. The evidence is suggesting and the evidence is clear, it's truthful, that it is not enough. There are a fall in, number, in the number of people entering the profession because of the financial constraints that it has. He didn't address the disproportionality on those that are women and are also uh, mature students uh, with, with dependents. I, I would ask him again you know, to, to look at some of those challenges. Look at ways. The scheme in Wales, for example, where you can actually you know, write off or somehow let students commit to working in the NHS that would then help to bring down any debt that they may incur uh, as, as, as a result of, of their studies. Um, it would be useful to know if there was ever any impact work done on the, the, the abolition of the bursary um, in 2017. Um, but, but what I will say, and just, just to say, you know, our NHS is everybody's pride and joy, and those entering the profession do it because they care and they want to make a difference. The government's job really should be about making it as easy and as flawless and seamless for them to do so as possible. The removal of the bursary and then the replacing of the student learning support packages are simply not enough, and that is why tens of thousands of people signed that petition because they wanted that debate here today. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 610557, 616557 and 619609 relating to pay and financial support for healthcare students. As many of that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Order, order. The sitting stands adjourned. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended.